Hello and welcome to another fun-filled adventure in Math Algebra 1 with Mr. Sims. This is Simplifying Radicals. And what we hope to do today is teach you how to simplify radicals. If you don't have a paper and pen, make sure you go ahead and grab one. We need it. So you can pause the video and grab one real quick. You will need it so you can practice problems. Never just watch the video instead. Make sure you have paper and pen handy so that you can practice and really solidify your learning, okay? Uh, literally, if you do not practice, I will come through the screen like the girl on the ring and it will be very, very scary. So just don't do it. So what we have here is simplifying radicals and we're going to start by asking the question what is a radical? And basically what we have a radical um, is the opposite of squaring. So if I were to take the number 3 squared and I were to ask that question what is 3 squared or what is 3 to the second power that's the same as saying 3 times 3 right? And the answer to that is 9. Well taking the square root of 9 or the radical of 9 I'm asking the question what number multiplies times itself to give me 9 and the answer to that as you can see here the number that multiplies times itself to get 9 is 3 so it's the inverse of squaring okay so that's what the basic radical is um, and uh, what we're trying to do today is we're trying to figure out how do you simplify a radical. A lot of times when you put in a radical, or sometimes when you put in a radical, you're going to get a simple number like this, right? And that's because 9 is a perfect square. And so today our goal is to simplify radicals by looking for perfect squares. Because sometimes it's not going to be like that. It's really nice if it is like that. You just type it in your calculator. If I type in the square root of 36 into my calculator, I'm going to get... 6. You can go ahead and try that now if you want. If I type in the square root of 49 into my calculator, I'm going to get 7. And if I type in the square root of, let's say, 16 into my calculator, I'm going to get 4. All right? So all of these here, um, all of these here are perfect squares. These 9, 36, 49, and 16 are perfect squares that can be simplified. When I'm, you can take the square root of them and you'll get this principal root of 3, 6, 7, and 4. All right. So the radical, once again, the whole point of the radical is you're just the opposite of squaring and you're asking the question, if I take this number here, 9, what number can I multiply times itself to give me that number? All right. So that's basically what a radical means. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually see what does that look like and how does that work? Um, but before we do that, I just want to do one more thing here. If uh, You could, simple, you could um, generalize this by saying if a squared equals b, right, then the square root of a squared, I'm sorry, uh, the square root, I didn't do that right, the square root of b is equal to a. Ta-da! All right, so that's that's how you could generalize this. And once again, this would be like 3 squared is b, which would be 9, and the square root of 9 is 3, okay? So that's just another way you might see it. That's just the rule, basically, okay? So to now what we're going to do is we're going to learn how do we actually go about making uh, these uh, various radicals simpler, simpler. How do we actually go about simplifying them? All right, which, so to do that, I'm going to actually just move my screen over just a little bit, and we're going to start by making a nice, beautiful chart. Whenever you start one of these problems, the first thing that you want to do is you want to make this chart that we showed you how to make in class. It'll make your job a whole lot easier, okay? Um, so let's say I wanted to simplify this square root here. Let's say the square root of 75. I wanted to simplify it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off first of all by making a chart that looks a lot like this where I have 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, sorry this is 3, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared, 7 squared, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 
14, and 15. And what you're going to do, um, we're going to actually come up with the first 15 squares. You can actually memorize these. It makes it a lot easier. Or you could type it into your calculator during the test. If you type it into the calculator during the test, you can make this very quickly and you can use it for every problem that requires um, simplifying, okay? Simplifying radicals. So all I'm going to do here, 1 squared is equal to... 1, 2 squared is equal to 4, 3 squared is equal to 9, 4 squared is equal to 16, 5 squared is equal to 25, 6 squared is equal to 36, 7 squared is equal to 49, 8 times 8 is equal to 64, 9 times 9 is equal to 81, 10 times 10 is 100, and 11 times 11 is 121, 12 times 12 is 144, 13 times 13 is 169, uh, 14 times 14 is 196, and you'll notice that the only difference between these two is that these two numbers flip. That helps me remember them. And then finally, 225 for 15. All right, so what we have here is we have all the perfect squares from 1 all the way to 15. I suggest you try and make this now. It's a good thing to do. You can pause the video and try and make it yourself with your calculators just so that you know that you can make it. All right, hopefully you actually went and made this yourself, and now we're actually going to use it. So what we do with this is we're, we're going to figure out where is 75 on this chart, okay? It's not actually anywhere, but where would it be on this chart? If it were anywhere, it would be right in between these two here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look, and I'm going to start dividing all, I'm going to start dividing 75 by each of these numbers, until I get one that gives me a whole number uh, when I divide. So in other words, I'm going to take 75 and I'm going to divide it by 64. When I take 75 and divide it by 64, I end up getting an ugly decimal number, one point blah, 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 something, okay? So that's not the one I'm looking for. So now I'm going to do 75 divided by 49. I do that and it doesn't work either. So I need to continue, okay? Make sure you always start from the biggest all the way to the least, okay? So 75 divided by 36, still no dice. So now the next one, 75 divided by 25. When I get that one, I get a beautiful number. It gives me the whole number, 3. So 75 divided by 25 is 3. Now what you need to know with uh, with radicals is that radicals can be broken up just like you would break up a regular number. Let's say I had the number 12, for instance. I could break the number 12 into 3 and 4, or 2 and 6, or 1 and 12, right? I can break it up to those, and it doesn't hurt at all. It's basically just me factoring it into those numbers, right? So what we're going to do is now we're going to do the same thing with the radical of 75. And the way that we do that is we figured out that 75 is divisible by this 25 here, right? And when we divide it by the 25, I'm going to put my 25 first since that was the number that we found that, uh, that divided into it. And the number we got on our calculator when we divided it by 25 was 3. So that's the second number I'm going to put, okay? So the square root of 75, square root of 25, square root of 3. So if I multiply 3 times 25, I should get 75 again. And in fact, if you try it on your calculator, 3 times 25 is in fact 75. So basically what I've done is I factor the square root of 75 into 25 and 3. But the nice thing now is this 25 is a perfect square root. So if I'm asking the question, what number can I multiply times itself to get 25? Well, I have it here on my beautiful list. The number that I can multiply times itself to get 25 is 5. All right. So 5 times the square root of 3. Now, the square root of 3 is not has no perfect squares inside of it anymore. Basically, you could divide the 3 by anything here. The 1 doesn't help you. If you divide it by 1, you're, you're just going to get 3 again, right? So just 5 square roots of 3 is the simplest that it can go. Yay! Victory is ours! All right, hopefully you understood that at this point, and we will continue. We'll do another couple problems so that you can see um, how this works. Let me go ahead and give you your second problem here, which is going to be the square root of 18. I'm actually going to leave that on the screen for now. Um, the square root of 18, okay? So I want you to go ahead, pause the video real quick, and try the square root of 18 and see if you get um, 
if you can get the answer. All right, hopefully you actually paused the video and did that to see if you could get the right answer. Uh, what I'm going to do now with the 18, once again, just like I told you with the last one, I'm going to find out where is 18 on this list, all right? And so if I do that, I find out that 18, basically if I keep going up the list, 18 fits in right here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all of these values here. I'm going to divide 18 first by 16, then by 9, then by 4, then by 1. All right, so what I'm going to do, take my 18, divide it by 16. When I do that, I get an ugly decimal answer. So that's not the one I'm looking for. So then I'm going to take 18, and I'm going to divide it by 9. And guess what? When I take 18 and I divide it by 9, I actually get something. So my first one I'm going to put down is 9. My second one I'm going to put down is the number I got when I divided it by 9. And that number was 2. So in other words, 2 times 9 is 18. What I've done is I factored that 18 into 9, and uh, that radical 18 into radical 9 times radical 2. Okay, or the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. So what I have now are two factors of it, but the nice thing is this factor, square root of 9, is a beautiful perfect square. That's why we're doing this. That's why we divide it by these perfect squares, because now that this is a perfect square, I can ask the question, what number multiplies times itself to give me 9? And as you know, 3 is the answer. So 3 square roots of 2 is your answer. And you can box that in and say, woohoo, teacher, I got it. Awesome. Any questions? All right, you can't ask questions on a video. It doesn't work. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, I'm going to give you a brand new one. I'm going to move over to another section of the page here. Let's just move over to here. And I'm going to give you this one here. Okay. This is going to be the square root of 1089. Now, what I would like for you to do very quickly is to actually go ahead and try this in your calculator. Okay. Ready? And go. All right. Hopefully, you did try this out. Hopefully, you made your chart and everything like that. However, if you made your chart and stuff like that, maybe you came up with the problem. Maybe you were really, really, really confused. <laughs> I pulled a nasty trick on you. I really did. Because square root of 1089, if you type it right into your calculator, it's a perfect square. 33 is your answer. So square root of 1089 is equal to 33. In other words, if I multiply 33 times 33, it gives me 1089 so I actually didn't even need that cute little nifty chart that you had to make before I actually just tricked you on that one you always want to take the number first and just try doing the square root of it in your calculator because sometimes it might just be a perfect square root and in that case you're wasting your time if you go ahead and make the chart and stuff like that so once again the square root of 1089 is equal to 33 and if we continued that chart that we made before if we continued it you would actually see that yes a 33 is on that list and it does equal 1089 but we always just stop at 15 because that's that's way more than enough okay so anyway hopefully that made sense to you moving on to the next problem let me just box that in and the next problem I'm going to give to you is the square root of 180 and I'm not gonna play any tricks on you this time so just go ahead uh, make your chart and solve the square root of 180 Hopefully you went and actually solved that, and I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, the steps that I would go to solve that, which is the same steps. I would start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, okay? So here's my chart. Um, these are all squared, right? One squared, all of these are squared. I'm going to save myself some time by not writing squared on all of them, but you get the idea. One squared is equal to one. Two squared is equal to four. Three squared is equal to nine. Four squared is equal to 16. Once again, 25, um, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, and 144, and 169, and 196, because you just flipped those 6 and 9 around, and 225.
All right, so let's look here. What we have is 180. 180, once again, would fit right in here. So I'm going to start by dividing 180 by all of these numbers here. So I started by 169. 180 divided by 169 is ugly. 180 divided by 144 is ugly. 180 divided by 121 is ugly. 180 divided by 100, ugly. 180 divided by 81, ugly. 180 divided by 64, ugly.